Today I'm going to talk about the little dungeon crawler that could, a bard who sings from her soul, Ellie Wick Tumblestrum. Hello Planeswalkers and welcome back to the Signature Spellbomb. My name is Chad and today we're going to be discussing another new Oathbreaker that might find a home in your decks. Heliwood Tumblestrum is a new Planeswalker and I'm going to be rating her based on war, playability, and cost. Let's get into it a little bit real quick with her lore. I'm going to give this card a really low lore rate rating at the moment because right now she does not exist in the Forgotten Realms, she doesn't exist in Magic, and she doesn't exist in D&D yet. I've heard through the grapevine that eventually Ellie Wick will be introduced into either the AD&D stories or the D&D stories in the near future, but at release of this set, that doesn't mean anything. There's nothing on this card lore-wise I can tie and really sink my teeth into. I do enjoy the art, even for its small imperfections. I just love that it looks like she's jamming out in the forest, and there's even little fairies and stuff jamming out with her as well. So I will give a little bit of love for that. Next, I want to move into the playability, since the lore didn't really like strike me very well. The playability of this card is I feel relatively low, but that might have a little bit to do with my distaste for the dungeon mechanic. This card cost two and two green, so four mana for four loyalty planeswalker, and all of its planeswalker abilities are very intrinsically tied to building a deck around the dungeon mechanic, which means you really can only build this deck one way, kind of on the rails, and I don't appreciate that. I like having options when we get new cards. Her plus one allows us to venture into a dungeon, which is useful. Many of the rooms in a dungeon are basically free spells and free abilities that can eke us out some advantage, so we can kind of think of the plus one as being a random engine depending on where we are in the dungeon. It takes a lot of skill to plan which rooms you're going to set up in a dungeon if you really do want to affect the other players in your game. So I do feel like there's a certain amount of testing of your magic skill involved to playing this Planeswalker. Her minus two is to look at the top six cards of your library and reveal a creature card from among them, put it in your hand. If it's legendary, you gain three life. You put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. I think in this set, that's a really interesting ability. For one, life gain in Oathbreaker is meaningful because we're starting off at 20, you can actually eke ahead incremental value in Oathbreaker. The creature you get is going to be good because that's basically just a draw spell on a Planeswalker. We want card advantage on our Planeswalker, so I can't get super upset about that. Um, it does feel like it wants you to take the legendary creatures that were in this set and other sets and just throw together a mono green legendary deck. So there might be an interesting home for some of the legendary elves and some of the other legendary creatures from Cross Magic's history in this deck. So it'd be interesting to see how people build around that second ability. And the last ability gives us an emblem that's going to pump all of our creatures um, and give them Trample and Haste. And the amount of extra power they get is dependent on how many dungeons we've completed in our run. So while we're playing Illywick, we really want to just complete all three dungeons if we can as fast as possible to kind of get the maximum bonus because it does have to be differently named dungeons. We do have to get her to the seven, which isn't a high mark to get her to, plus green is flush with things like Evolutionary Sage, which lets us proliferate on a landfall trigger. So I could definitely see people getting to that bomb of an emblem uh, fairly frequently in game. Uh, I would say playability. As long as you want to build a dungeon deck, she is your best option for anything other than that. I don't feel like she's highly playable. Maybe she's okay within the 58 of your deck for other decks just to allow you access to a special resource that is dungeons just to get that extra value you wouldn't have access to otherwise. I haven't played with dungeons enough yet to really be super excited by them. So I would say, you know, middle of the road. I wouldn't... I wouldn't rank her super highly on playability, it's just she's really niche, would be the nicest way to put that. And then finally, I want to talk about her uh, value, her cost. Right now, she's $2.93. That's really not bad for a Planeswalker card. It's probably not going to move too much. Now, as far as Ellie Wood goes, I would really like to know what signature spells you guys would pair with her. Um, I always feel like I want to stay on flavor, maybe pull something from the set that's going to cause her to venture into the dungeon more often just to hit that trigger. But that might not be the best way to build her. So I certainly want you guys' opinion on that. And certainly if you give your opinion in the comments below, it might help another brewer that's having trouble or isn't really connecting with this Planeswalker they, the way they want to build the deck that they're looking for. So you might help somebody else by accident. That's really kind of all I have to say about this card today. I do look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. And I just want you to remember, your Planeswalker Spark lights up my life.